all to Law Seekho's thorough newspaper analysis for 27th of Feb 2024. Guys, due to some medical reasons, I am not able to open my camera, but request your cooperation in this. Within a few days when I'm well, I'll be able to meet you all through a camera recording. Okay. So we'll be discussing uh, a very interesting editorial section today. Why release of Netflix in the Rani Mukherjee, Sheena Bora documentaries have been paused. So this is a case which was related to uh, Indrani Mukherjee and uh, Sheena Bora murder case, which was there in the media for a very quite long period of time. And on the basis of that, a, a Netflix documentary has been made. And why that particular documentary has been, uh, you know, paused by the released and what is the court orders on this particular case? Then we'll be discussing about the news update and lastly, the legal news update of the day. So the context behind this particular editorial is the release of a Netflix documentary, which has been pushed back after the Central Bureau of Investigation that, that is being investigating this particular case has moved to the Bombay High Court to request for this particular stay. The CBI says that the show which explores the high-profile Sheena Bora murder case could prejudice the ongoing trial. So what is happening? Uh, it is an ongoing trial which is happening uh, in Sheena Bora and Indra Mukher Indrani uh, Mukherjee case. And CBI contest that if the particular, you know, documentary is released, then it would certainly affect the ongoing trial. So Netflix told Bombay High Court that it will not air the show till 29th of Feb, which is the next date of the court hearing. And Netflix will also arrange for a screening for CBI and the judges of the court to decide whether this particular documentary should be released or not. So I, I hope I am clear. Now, the first question that would come here is before you is what is a Sheena Bora murder case? So on, on August 21, 2015, uh, there was one man which was arrested by Mumbai police named Shamwar Rai. Now Shamwar Rai has an illegal possession of firearm. Now during the investigation and interrogation, Shamwar Rai disclosed that this there is an involvement of murder of Sheena Bora which happened sometime three years ago. Okay. Now, who was Rai? Rai was the driver of high-profile media executive named Peter and Indrani Mukherjee. Rai revealed that he, along with Indrani and Sanjeev Khanna, who is Indrani's ex-husband, had murdered 25-year-old Sheena Bora, who is Indrani's daughter from a previous relationship. Okay. So what has happened, I will show you a chart here to explain all the family of Indrani Mukherjee, who is Sheena Bora, who is uh, Sanjeev Khanna. So Rai confessed that with the help of Indrani Mukherjee and Sanjeev Khanna, who is the ex-husband of Indrani, they murdered 25-year-old Sheena Bora. Now, uh, on the basis of this confession, police arrested Indrani and Sanjeev Khanna by which time the case had been taken over by the CBI and Peter was also arrested. I will tell you who is Peter. Now, CBI said that Mukherjee killed Bora as they were against the relationship between Sheena and Rahul Peter's son from previous marriage. So Peter was the third husband of Indrani whose son was Rahul and Sheena and Rahul were in relationship and Indrani was against this particular relationship. Okay. Indrani has continued to deny this claim, saying that there are major discrepancies in CBI case. He also said that Sheena Bora is alive and somewhere in abroad. Sanjeev Khanna, Peter and she was she uh, were currently on trial and they are released on bail right now. Okay. Now, what are why CBI does not want Netflix uh, to release this document? So, CBI first approached the trial court on the stay and uh, it was uh, not the trial court said that it was the only high court of the supreme court which can decide the matter on this now 
please see the diagram here sheena bora has three husband and one was the first one was chira who was the partner whom she was eloped with him when she was 19 out of that relationship with chira she had two uh, you know uh, kids one was sheena and was was mikhail the first husband was siddharth das who was a business from tripura the second husband was sanjeev khanna okay whose daughter was vidhi okay and uh, the later the vidhi was adopted by peter mukherjee who was uh, the third husband of indrani peter was peter has also first wife named shabnam and out of that relationship peter and shabnam had two sons robin and rahul and this two sheena and rahul were into relationship with each other which indrani did not like and indra indrani with the second husband named sanjeev khanna murdered sheena bora this was the allegation uh, which was there okay so this is the whole life story of indrani mukherjee i hope I, I, I you are getting my point now now what happened when cbi approached and objected to the netflix documentary cbi told that new revelations and unprecedented access can be given to the show which can or which can mislead the public and witness in the ongoing trial okay now it also said that show features mikhail indrani's son and sheena brother as well as vidhi indrani's other daughter both witness in the ongoing case which will which is a brazen violation of indrani's bail condition okay so this was all cbi cbi had an objection towards the release of netflix documentary and they had objection that it will all it will uh, deflect the ongoing trial now what is the issue of censorship so issue of censorship here is concerned with an article mentioned in constitution name 191a which is related to freedom of speech and expression courts have been generally reluctant to enforce pre censorship unless pressing grounds exist okay in many cases courts have considered article 21 which says no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to the procedure established by law now here court will take into account whether the content in question would impact the impartial court accused and their family members have also raised the concerns regarding their right to privacy and dignity in such cases notably in most such cases witnesses and family members uh, family members of involved parties have approached the court rather than the investigation agency itself so what happens in maximum cases the witnesses and the family members of the party approach to the court regarding the stay of the release of documentary but here the question is about uh, the cbi getting objecting to the netflix documentary and we'll see further in further days what bombay high court has a say on the release this was all about the indra indrani like indrani mukherjee case which is related to the sheena bora murder case and we'll see what bombay high court has a say on this particular documentary now national uh, coming up to the national news sudarshan setu pm modi inaugurates india's longest cable stayed bridge so prime minister narendra modi has inaugurated sudarshan setu which is the india's longest cable stayed bridge connecting okha mainland and bed dwarka okay now the bridge earlier known as signature bridge bridge was also known as signature bridge now it has been named as sudarshan setu the bridge was initiated by center in 2017 to ease the commute for devotees between Okha and Beit Dwarka. I hope I am clear with this. Okay. So, PM Modi inaugurates India's longest cable state bridge named Sudarshan Setu. Center asks states to fix six years as minimum age for class one admission. So, what central government has asked to issue a notice to all the states and UTs to fix six years as a minimum age for class one admission. Now, what they are saying here is the center has informed the Lok Sabha that 14 states and UTs has allowed class 1 admission for children who have not completed 6 years. Okay. Now, as per the education policy which came in 2020, the first 5 years comprise 3 years of preschool, 
corresponding the age group of three to six years and two years of classes one and two corresponding to the age group of six to eight years. Okay, so what center has asked the state to fix six years age as minimum age for class one admission guys. And it is as per in line with the national education policy, which came in 2022 and right of children to free and compulsory education 2009. So this two particular act are there in, in this particular news. President Murmu to launch Purple Fest for Disabled. So, President Draupadi Murmu inaugurated a day-long purple fest at Amrit Udyan in Rashtrapati Bhavan on February 26, 2024. Okay? Now, let us understand what are the key activities of purple fest. Key activities of purple fest are Amrit Udyan visit, Know Your Disabilities, Purple Cafe, Purple Kaleidoscope, Purple Live Experience Zone and Purple Sports. And purple sports. Okay. Now, in line with Prime Minister called uh, the disabled as Divyang instead of Viklang, the center renamed the Department of Empowerment of Person with Disabilities to incorporate the word Divyang in its Hindi as well as in English nomenclature. So, please understand here, the department will be earlier, was earlier known as Viklangjan Shashakti Karan Vibhag. And in Hindi is known as the Vyangjan Shashakti Karan Vibhag. So please understand this purple fest which is related to disabled and all the things that are there are related to uh, disabled which we call now as the Vyang. Okay. Union Minister Baghel inaugurates first National Public Health India Conference. So Union Minister of State Health and Family have inaugurated First National Public Health India Conference. Okay? This is a three-day conference which is organized by National Center for Disease Control. Okay? The event also saw the launch of a revamped NCDC website. Okay? The event has also saw the launch of revamped NCDC website. So, please, yaad rakhiega that Union Minister Baghel, who is the Union Minister of State of Health and Family Affairs, has launched first national public health india conference now coming up to the international news felicity Fel tio named pacific island nations new prime minister so tuvalu's parliamentary members have selected former attorney general felicity tio as the pacific island nations new prime minister guys okay now what is Tuvalu? Tuvalu is South Pacific and is an independent island nation within the British Commonwealth. Understand, within the British Commonwealth. Its nine islands comprise small populated atolls and reef island with palm fringe beach and WW2 sites. Capital is Funafuti, continent is Oceania. Consi capital is Funafuti and continent Oceania. And Faleti Tio, Faleti Tio named Pacific Island Nation new Prime Minister. Astronomers detect hidden moons orbiting Neptune and Uranus. So using ground-based ba telescope, astronomers have discovered three previously unknown moons in the space around Uranus and Neptune. Yad rakhiega. Okay? That brings with a new statistical number Uranus official moon count to 28 and Neptune to 16. And Neptune to 16. Yad rakhiega. Uranus official moon count turns out to 28 and Neptune to 16. Coming up to the legal update, coming from the Delhi High Court, where party providing wrong address during proceeding cannot argue incorrect arbitration notice under section 21 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act. So what, it was a single judge bench case named, uh, named uh, coming from Justice Rekha Pali and where, where, where the party provides incorrect address in proceeding, it cannot be permitted to urge that invocation notice of arbitration under section 21 of Arbitration Conciliation Act which was not served at the correct address. So what court here is telling that if the party has provided a wrong address during proceeding, it cannot argue under section 21 
that the notice is not served at the correct address under section 21 of the arbitration and conciliation act and the case name is devender kumar kashyap versus chander muni okay now coming up to the next legal update food safety and standards act override indian penal code simultaneous prosecution under both acts not possible so here court has observed that if a case is registered against the accused in both the act for food alteration under ipc and food safety and standards act the proceeding under ipc cannot be continued against the accused so here the court has given an overriding effect to the food safety and standards act 2006 and court is saying that the both the in both the act simultaneous prosecution is not possible and it is clearly giving an overriding effect to the provision of s s s s a okay so uh, they are giving the overriding effect by the virtue of section 89 of f s s a which talks about overriding effect of act over all other food related laws and here we are also linking section 273 of ipc and section 59 of f s s a act so yaad kariyega here we are linking 89 of f s s a act 59 of f s a act and 273 of ipc and the case name is ram nath versus state of up and another guys if you want to revise your previous tna then please please uh, do attempt the quiz that is mentioned in the link of this video and uh, guys please like the video please support our channel through subscribing our channel please put your valuable feedback in the comment section we would love to hear from you thank you so much for joining guys take care